Hello. In this video, we are going to learn about the multinomial distribution. In particular, and by the end of the video, you should be able to explain what types of phenomena can be modelled using a multinomial distribution, and you should be able to write down the probability function for a multinomial distribution. Before getting on to the multinomial distribution, let's review a related type of random variable that we have already encountered during this course, namely the binomial random variable. If you remember, we saw that the binomial random variable could be used to model the number of successes in, identical, in n identical trials that have probability of success p. Furthermore, we showed that the probability mass function for this type of random variable is given by the expression sh shown on this slide, which gives the probability that well, there will be exactly k successes when we perform the n identical trials. In this video, we are going to extend this idea of Bernoulli trial by asking what happens if there are more than two outcomes in each of the trials that we perform. For instance, if we roll two dice, we know that there are 11 possible outcomes, the numbers from 2 up to 12. What we would like is an expression for the probability of getting exactly k7s if we roll two dice n times. Before we get onto that idea, however, let's first briefly review how trials with more than two possible outcomes work. Here I have an example of a trial that can have three possible outcomes. We are picking a person, either Stephen, Conrad or Michael, at random. The probability that we pick Stephen is P1, the probability that we pick Conrad is P2, and the probability that we pick Michael is P3. Furthermore, as always, we will use the numbers to denote these various outcomes, rather than people's names, as we are mathematicians. Therefore, we will say that if we pick Stephen, our random variable will take on a value of 1. If we pick Conrad, the value of our random variable will be 2. And if we pick Michael, the value of our random variable will be 3. With all this information in place, we can, as we have now seen countless times, construct a cumulative probability distribution function for this random variable. We see that for all x less than 1, the value of this function is 0. For all x greater than or equal to 1 and less than 2, the value of the cumulative probability distribution is p1. For all x greater or equal to 2 and less than 3, the value of the cumulative probability distribution function is p1 plus p2. And for all x greater than 3, the value of the cumulative probability distribution function is 1. We are not interested in performing a single trial, however. We are interested in performing multiple trials. In other words, we are going to perform n trials, and each of those trials is going to have one of k possible outcomes. Here is an example of the sort of data we are going to collect by doing this. Here I have done an experiment with four possible outcomes, the numbers 1 through 4, and I have done this experiment 23 times. To simplify the data, I will now count how many times each of the k possible outcomes appeared. The final result will thus be k random variables. For the example shown here, which remember was 23 trials, each of which had four possible outcomes, for instance, I will have a random variable x1 that counts how many times I got outcome 1. I say we'll have a second random variable x2, which counts how many times I got outcome 2. I will then have a third random variable x3 that counts the number of times that I got outcome 3. And lastly, I will have a fourth random variable x4 that counts the number of times that the outcome was equal to 4. I can write a probability function for the k random variables that are generated through this procedure. In particular, I can write the following expression for the, the, for the probability that I will 
get exactly small x1 outcomes of type 1, small x2 outcomes of type 2, and small, small x3 outcomes of type 3, and so on. In this expression, the pi values are the individual probabilities for observing each of the k possible outcomes in one particular trial. The sum of all the pi values must therefore be equal to 1. The xi values are then the number of outcomes of each type. So, if we perform n trials in total, the value of the probability shown in this expression is only non-zero if the following summation is satisfied. In terms of how this expression, the expression for the probability I mean, is derived, the derivation follows that of the binomial distribution. The part in the product is just the probability that a particular sequence of trial results is observed. For instance, if we performed four trials, and each, each of which had three possible outcomes, one, two, or three, and we wanted the probability of the sequence 3, 1, 1, 2, we would multiply P3 by P1 by P1 by P2. In other words, we would compute P3 times P1 squared times P2 exactly, as this product is telling us to. As with the binomial random variable, there are then multiple ways to form a sequence involving a single 3, two 1s and a 2. For example, we can have 3, 1, 1, 2, as we already discussed. We can have 1, 1, 2, 3. We can have 1, 2, 3, 1, and so on. For the binomial random variable, we saw that we could calculate the number of possible sequences using the binomial coefficient. For the multinomial random variable, we do something similar, except now we compute the number of permutations using the so-called multinomial coefficient, which is what is shown here. The multinomial random variable is thus derived in a manner that is similar to the manner in which the binomial random variable is derived. In fact, if each trial has two possible outcomes, the probability distribution for the multinomial random variable reduces to that of the binomial random variable. To summarise then, we stated at the start of this video that by the end of the video you should be able to explain what types of phenomenon can be modelled using a multinomial distribution. As the video has explained, the multinomial distribution is used to consider what happens when we perform multiple trials that each have k possible outcomes. I also stated that you would be able to write down the probability function for a multinomial distribution that is shown here. If you are able to follow all this, well done. If not, watch the video again and see if you understand the content better on the second pass. Thanks for your attention.